Qigong and bioluminescence. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. So I'm out in some beautiful New Zealand countryside today. You can probably see a little bit of that behind me. Um, and the reason for that is, is we have some visitors here uh, from another country uh, visiting and so have got out and about to see a few different places. And one of the places we went yesterday was the Waitomo Caves. Um, these are a well-known set of caves in New Zealand and um, I'll put some footage uh, behind over the top of this so you can see a little bit of it they don't let you film too much inside or take too many photos which is a little bit disappointing uh, but at least I'll put a few shots in so you get a little bit of an idea of the place and, and maybe some of the surrounding area so these are some really beautiful caves um, and you know whenever I'm out exploring different things in nature of course Qigong well, it helps to increase our connection with nature, you know, so we appreciate nature a lot more when we're tuned into the energy. And as well as that, so many of the, well, you know, there's this principle in Qigong that um, of, of reflection, um, uh, microcosmic reflection. So that the things that we see on a large scale in the universe, we see on a smaller scale, uh, you know, at every level of the universe. And so this applies to all the things we see within nature at those levels as well. And so we can learn a lot about ourselves from observing the nature around us. Uh, and so whenever I'm doing these sorts of things, I, I like to think, well, you know, maybe there's a maybe there's a chi life vlog in there somewhere um, about some of the places that I visit. And so I was thinking, what could I talk about with these caves? And there's a few different things that I could talk about that tie into Qigong practices. Um, for example, one of the things that is very relevant, um, some of the Qigong practices that we do focus on working with the meridians within the body, the, the pathways that energy flows along. And the organ meridians in particular function very much like rivers um, flowing through the body. And we typically focus more on the, the portion of those meridians which is close to the surface. Um, and, and you know that is very much like a river on the surface of the earth. Um, but those same meridians have parts where they go deep inside so they're on the surface and then they'll go deep into the body as well and that is like a river going underground which we don't observe so much um, you know obviously from the surface as we're walking around but these caves are an example of that um, it's it's limestone caves which have formed from water um, you know seeping through the earth and then going down and forming a river in uh, underground through the you know deep in the earth rather than on the surface of the earth and so there's a, a tie-in with the structure um, of our of our organ marines and that can help us to understand this this uh, principle of how things are mirrored through every layer of of the universe um, including within ourselves and help us to understand the meridians themselves better as well so you'll see um, in some of the footage that I have of the cave that there is still a, a river that flows through there obviously uh, at some stage perhaps that river was a lot larger and it's you know made these big caves but there's still that water flowing through underground but I thought um, I would talk about something far more obscure for this vlog and I know I've taken a little while to get to it but hopefully that's okay hopefully the other things I've talked about are interesting as well and that is bioluminescence um, one of the things in the in the caves and unfortunately I wasn't able to get any photos uh, or video of this because these are in the areas that you're not allowed to um, is there are lots and lots and lots of glowworms um, and if you haven't seen glowworms well basically they they um, they have a, a little spot you need the lights off to, to see them because that's when they they turn their light on and there's these little dots of glowing you know and they'll be all over the walls and the roof of the cave kind of like stars um, something else you might be familiar with that does something similar as a firefly you find fireflies different parts of the world not here but we get 
those fireflies, they kind of blink on and off. The glowworms, it's just a steady, just light. And they're just like, you know, when you're in the cave, it's like a, a night sky with, with, with tons and tons of, of these glowing lights everywhere. And these are some interesting examples of bioluminescence, living things creating light. There are other animals uh, or creatures that do this as well, very obviously creating light and, and sending that out. What's not so obvious is that other living things do as well, including humans. It's, it's, it's right there, out there at the very subtle, subtle edge of, of things we don't normally go around glowing bright like a like a star in the in the sky or something like that but we do emit light particles and um, you know you it's not something you're likely to be aware of um, unless you've had some really interesting and unusual experiences because it's it's sort of at the fringe of our um, perception um, and normally, as humans, we live in light-saturated environments. Um, and that's, that's our natural thing, is to, to have a lot of light around us. And just like the glowworms, when the lights are on, we don't need to turn our light on in the same way, in terms of emitting photons. Um, but when the lights are out, this becomes stronger. And so... Again, I said I'd get into some of the more obscure things. This is this is one of the ways that um, caves have been used traditionally in some of the qigong practices, and this is this is quite a rare kind of practice. But people would go and do long periods of meditation in a cave, and the reason why they would go into a cave was because all of the light could be shut out completely so that I guess they wouldn't do it in a cave with glowworms um, but one without it and because there's rock all around them all of the light could be completely shut out and in a space like that without other light around us we naturally start our, our own ability to emit photons starts to come to the fore and increase an incredibly incredibly subtle practice um, but one that's really really interesting one that takes a lot of dedication uh, as well but but can lead to some interesting interesting insights so um, I just thought I'd make a few comments about that a few comments you know I guess about some of the inspiration from nature some of the different practices that can come from different natural environments as well um it is you know qigong is this vast vast body of knowledge uh, and body of practice often there there are certain uh practices that are more common that we spend most of our time and our focus on uh, because they are the ones that are most practically useful to us most of the time and so that's a good reason for us to focus on the most you know working with breath and movement and uh, and with intention developing our mind as well but qigong is also much bigger than that um, it does also get into some of these if you're exploring energy there's so much to explore um, and so it can get into some of these much more unusual things as well like working with our own bioluminescence now even developed to a high level i don't think you're going to be glowing like a glowworm but it is something that can be developed and increased so that you increase that emission of light well look anyway i hope you've enjoyed this vlog today um if you have please like comment subscribe share hoping to have some other interesting ones from some other interesting natural places in new zealand that i'm going to be visiting over the next day or so and as usual, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.